Hello, everyone. Welcome to the new Sustainable You. I'm Jackie Leone, and I would like to introduce Valerie Litt from Yonkers Nork and Z Baird from the Crestwood from Crestwood Library, um, one branch of uh, Yonkers Public Library. Hi, everybody. My name is Valerie Litt. I'm the program director of the Yonkers Nork. The NORC serves seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We're under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We have great partners with the Yonkers NORC, one of which is the Yonkers Public Library. The library has three branches, Riverfront, Will, and Crestwood. Please visit your local library. I'm not sure if we have Zeon, but we have somebody. I am there. right here. Oh, we do. I'm so sorry. We have I'm Zeon. in stereo. I love it. Yes. It's great. So I'm very grateful to the NORC for collaborating with us. Sustainability is a very big um, theme at Yonkers Public Library. We're entering into our new five-year five long-range plan. And I want to commend Jackie for being a pioneer um, at the Yonkers Public Library for sustainability. And I also want to give credit to friends of Crestwood Library who have been staunch supporters of our environmentalism and sustainable practices here at the library and in the Crestwood community. So thank you, Nork, for, you know, jumping on the bandwagon and supporting. Thank you, Jackie, for taking the lead. Thank you, Crestwood crew, for always believing in this important topic. And thank you, everybody who's joining us today, uh, the Hanley family, Julie, uh, we have Chris, uh, and we have a lot of other people uh, just trying to get on now. Wale is going to join us, and we're going to have a great discussion about things that we can do to nurture the earth. So back to you, Valerie. Thank you. And without further ado, here is Jackie Leone with Sustainable You. Hi, everyone. Um, so today's topic, this is a fun month because it is... Um, Earth Day on April 22nd. So this entire month, uh, among other things, uh, but this entire month, we celebrate the earth and we celebrate uh, all of the accomplishments of people who have achieved a lot of things in the environmental movement. What we're doing at the Crestwood Library um, is to have a raised bed. We're gonna be growing our own herbs and vegetables. And that's where I wanna to start today. Uh, and before I start, does anybody have any questions? Um, we'll be putting in the chat um, the Crestwood phone number and my email in Z's email. Um, so if Phil or Matt could do that, uh, put our phone number. So I'm gonna talk about the Seed Library um, because we'll be, by Friday, we will have packets prepared for everybody in the uh, neighborhood to grow, you know, you have a choice of growing your own herbs or vegetables or flowers. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, this is a seed packet and on one side is our new logo, the Yonkers Public Library logo. And on the other side is a QR code for the name of the vegetable that is in the packet. Um, for those of you who don't like working with QR codes, we will have printed instructions because the idea behind the QR code is to follow the, the links to the instructions for how to grow this particular uh, plant. So what I do is I put my phone over the QR code and I pretend to take a picture and I'm taken to a document that gives me a set of instructions for how to grow the herb, flower or vegetable. Um, each packet will have this QR code. 
Um, what we'll be doing as well is making recommendations and giving out some dirt pods or dirt blocks. And no, I'm, I'm not talking about uh, Minecraft. What we decided to do at the Crestwood Library is instead of using um, instead of using things like this to grow our seedlings, so we go and purchase these things at like Home Depot or Lowe's. They're like little seed starter um, pots. <clears throat> These are cells, right? But the problem with these things is that they come wrapped up in a little, a lot of plastic. Yes, it's convenient on one hand, but on the other hand, there is another way. And so the other way that we've come up with is to make dirt blocks. And you make a dirt block with a dirt block maker, okay? So here in my, Tupperware, more plastic, um, but it is a place for me to put moistened dirt. I have a dirt block maker. And what I do with the dirt block maker is that I push it down in the moistened dirt and I rock it back and forth to get dirt inside it. And then I pull it up and then I push out, I push out the blocks that are made. Okay, so in is a little wet, but the dirt block maker makes a dirt block and you can pull it together and put the seedling in and put the seedling either in a tray or in one of these quar cells. Quar, what you see here, that fibrous stuff, that's from the inside of a coconut. And so you put your seed in the dirt and then put it, either put it in um, the cell or just lay it inside a tray with a bunch of other blocks. So this way, you're not running to the store to get more cells, plant cells to, that are wrapped in plastic in order to grow your seedlings. I will say that I've seen other ingenious uh, devices where <clears throat> they take, and this is a doggone shame, but it is ingenious. Also wrapped in a lot of plastic are these little heat pots, heat pellets, really. And each one is inside a plastic bag. Now, it's a great idea on one hand, um, because it is like less plastic than getting the actual plastic seedling cells. See, that is that is the peat pot or peat, what is it called? Peat pellet. When you soak it in water, it expands and then you can put your seed in and start your seedling that way. And then you can put it in a peat pot and you can plant the entire thing in a pot of dirt or outside in your garden. So that's how it works. Um, and generally the way some of us do this is through going to the store, going to a nursery and buying packages of seeds. See, this was last year's package of seeds. Very, very pretty, very, very nice. Hudson Valley Seed Company, right? It's so pretty. But the problem is with some of these seed companies is that they will give um, customers seeds that are not as viable, have a lower percentage of actually growing than other premium seeds. Some companies don't inform their customers that they've mixed in lower quality seeds with higher quality seeds. The company we went with, uh, Yonkers Public Library, um, Fedco Seeds, they have given us bulk seeds. And what we've done is an Anna Ganser from Riverfront 
has put this all together where we took um, an envelope, a paper envelope. Hang on, let me do it again. Hang on. The one that I showed you before. We scoop in the seeds and then we put, we put the label on and then we divvy it out to um, everybody, you know, in the neighborhood who wants seeds. And the reason I'm showing you this is to let you know that Yonkers Public Library has really taken care to become more sustainable, to do things that would have less plastic, less waste. These paper envelopes, they're biodegradable. They may take time to biodegrade, but they'll definitely biodegrade before this bag of plastic will. Um, so that's, that's pretty much how we're doing it. We're giving out dirt blocks, peat pots, and seedlings. Um, anyone who doesn't want a seedling can just take home an envelope of seeds. There's a limited amount. Um, not everybody's gonna wanna grow eggplant. Z is really excited to grow, uh, to grow cucumbers. So we're gonna have a big cucumber um, trellis and we'll be growing tomatoes and all the usual herbs. Um, so let's take a look at the slides. And before I move on, does anybody have any questions? Okay. Okay. Ah, so what we did for Earth Month was we're doing a give out, not just seeds, but we have made our own dish scrubbies. Now, when I say we, I definitely don't mean me. I mean the crochet crew. Uh, Allison, Karina, and Natalie, that's Natalie in the picture there. Um, we got cotton yarn and a pattern, which we're going to give out to people. And I am going to make recommendations. I might for those of you who really like to crochet, I will give you the name of the cotton that we use, the cotton thread. And we got this from a company that makes the cotton and that one section of their cotton is very, very scrubby, right? These are good for dishes. You just load it with soap and you do your dishes, your glassware and your silverware. These will not do too much on a baked on, caked on black pan. This, this is not the thing that you would use. I would like to be able to make something like that. One of those, you know, heavy duty scrubbers, but this is just for light dishes, you know, dishes that are not really caked on. So we did different colors, different sizes, and we'll be giving out uh, those patterns. And also for Earth Month, the crew crocheted an earth ball. Uh, you can use it as a squeeze ball. You can use it as a pin cushion. Um, and you could just use it to have it there, you know, as a, um, ooh, I don't wanna play that yet. We're not ready for that. Um, and you could just use it there to remind you of um, Earth Month. Rather than giving out plastic, toy earths, this is what we opted to do, rather than something plastic or foam, which doesn't break down in the environment. So pictured here is Allison, who is going to, I'm gonna show the video, who will give you some tips on starting the scrubby. So take a listen. Hi, my name is Allison. I work part time at the Crossroads Library, and I'm going to be walking you through a few of the crochet techniques that you're going to need to make your own uh, scrubby dishcloth. So, okay. thing you're going to want to do is make a chain. So, I have my own yarn here at home. It is not the scrubby yarn, um, but you take your piece of yarn, you have your little tail, and then this comes down to the back of your bundle, and you're going to start with a slip knot. So, what that is is you take your piece of yarn twist it and pull the tail end through the loop you create 
uh, the tightness. We have this little knot, nice and tight. Uh, it's a slip knot because the yarn can, you know, slip right through, and you know, then you have your piece of yarn without on in it. But it is how all crochet projects start. You put it on your hook, and you have your first little piece. And to chain and create that chain of 32 that the pattern calls for, but you can make it shorter, longer, whatever you want to do. You take your yarn, pull it with your hook, pull it over. I'm going to like get it a little closer. You take your yarn, bring it around, twist a little bit so it's a little easier to get a grab hold of, and then pull it through the hole you created. And that is your first chain. It creates an almost V like shape. You're going to keep doing that. Um, it takes a little getting used to, um, you know, the tension, kind of grabbing the yarn, pulling it through. It doesn't matter how long or how fast you do it, um, just as long as, you know, you're making a chain. And you're going to eventually end up with almost like a little braid it's going to look like. When you yeah. have your chain of 32, uh, the next step in the pattern is doing a single crochet all the way across, sort of creating the base of your dishcloth, of your scrubby dishcloth. Um, a single crochet, what that is, is I want to get the yarn close so you can see as best uh, as you can. You are going to be putting the hook into the little V that you've created. So you have the braid, it's a little blurry, but if you can see the hook is going to go into that V, right? So what single crochet is, is you have your chain, you go into that stitch, not the stitch your yarn is coming in through, but the one right after it. You are here now, you have two little stitches on your hook. You pull your yarn over, like you're chaining, like you chained before. Twist a little, pull it through your first stitch, and you still have two. You pull the yarn again, and then pull it through, whoops, your next two. You notice my yarn slipped off the hook, but Yarn's pretty resilient. It'll usually hold that little circle for you. So if that happens, that's okay. You just slip your hook right back in there and your red is right. So again, single crochet. I'm trying to figure out the best way to show this to you, but I will share with Jackie some YouTube videos. So, um, you know, you're never without a reminder. Okay. So I just, I wanted to let you know that because I'm not going to make you watch the whole nine minutes, it would be better if you had all the materials. So I just wanted to use Allison's video as an example, and we will be putting it up on our website as a blog. But just so you know, I do have the yarn, and it's a number five crochet um, pen, crochet hook, crochet hook, uh, to make a scrubby. And the reason we did that is that whatever it is that we offer you through the library, I want to make sure, and Z has been very mindful in making sure that whatever we give you that is useful to use at home is 100% biodegradable. This is all cotton. It's not acrylic. It's not polyester. It's 100% cotton. So that when you're done with it, after you've washed it a million times and it's no longer pretty and it's ripped in spots and it's come apart, you could go throw that into your garden, assuming that you used non-toxic soaps to clean it. Um, are there any questions? Anybody have any questions about our scrubbies? Okay. So let's go. Let's let us continue. Hi, my oh. name's Allison. I work part-time at the Christopher Black. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how um, for Earth Day last year we cleaned up some of the wooded area. And we're going to do another one of those close to the library on Reed Avenue because that's the wooded area near our houses. And the, it doesn't make sense for our wooded area to be filthy dirty. We last year we found plastic on, on the one that's all the way to the left, the picture of me, plastic buried under leaves. The middle picture shows a fallen tree and the tree is slowly over time decaying and other trees in the dirt are being nourished by that decay. Unfortunately, picture number three, 
under the decaying leaves, there's a, an aluminum can. So part of what we wanted to do last year was to go into our local, our local area and um, go into our local area and, and clean things up a bit. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Does anybody notice in, in their own, you know, um, in their own neighborhood that you see this kind of thing going on? Of course. Yeah, like all the time, Jackie, all the right. time. It's, it's, right. Wherever you go, you're always going to find litter and all this stuff hanging around. Right. Well, interestingly enough, we found some gunshots, like casings of, uh, uh, you know, uh, rifles, you know, the plastic casing with the buckshot in it. We wow. found that sort of sitting on one of the stumps over there. A wine bottle that still had wine in it, um, a case of beer, not a case, a, a six pack of beer that was ter horribly bloated and all kinds of dog bags. Um, people think that that's okay. And then we have this, where I said finding the trash. What's interesting about the picture to the left is that you have one of those cement blocks. And what amazes me if you look at that cement block, right there is nature pushing up around it. That's from construction. And I will say, even though I found that off of Reed Avenue, you don't see much of that. Um, I'm actually amazed that we don't see more um, because cement is a little toxic. And so is asphalt. And sometimes when the workers come by, the asphalt sort of goes into the dirt next to it. And in the other picture where one of my solutions for trying to be sustainable, you work with friends, right? Including friends of Crestwood Library who helped me last year build the raised bed and they're gonna be helping making dirt blocks. Oh, didn't I tell you that, Ed? <laughs> We're gonna be making- oh, I've gotta go, goodbye. <laughs> We're going to be making dirt blocks. Actually, uh, probably some of the crew is going to be making dirt blocks today. Um, but we really want to get the seedlings going because we're experiencing a warm April, if you haven't noticed, climate change. <laughs> okay. And then the next one. So April showers, right? So my hope is we do get some more rain because by the end of the month, you wanna have the ground saturated so that what we put in the ground can grow and have enough moisture. Um, okay, does anybody have any, any questions about what I did earlier? If you'd like me to go over some of that because we were talking about making dirt blocks and I have a dirt block maker and that's made without using a plastic container. And all you have to do is take the block of dirt and plant it in the ground. Um, for us, if I feel like it's sort of falling apart, I'll probably put it into one of the ones I have left over from last year. But any questions? Okay. Um, the other thing is when you're talking about planting seedlings when you're planting seeds you're not going to just use um you're not going to just use any old dirt you're going to use a combination it's called a seed starter mix again in a plastic bag not awesome but in the seed starter is peat moss compost and coconut coir, uh coir compost or co coconut coir. And coconut coir is just a fancy name for the coconut fiber inside the shell. And vermiculite, does anyone know what vermiculite or perlite is? It's volcanic. Um, and what it does, it's that white stuff, that to me, my whole life, I always thought that those white little pellets inside of um, seedling dirt, seed starter, I always thought that it was 
plastic. It's not. It's uh it's a it it helps to aerate it helps to aerate soil because it expands. Um I believe it's volcanic ash. Don't hold me to that. I've been learning. Vermiculite's not my area. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, let's go over dates. April 22nd, I will be at the library for Earth Day so that we can clean up the grounds around the library and start uh, working on the raised bed. We're gonna put in more compost um, and we're gonna prepare the bed for some of the seedlings, which is why I really wanna get the seedlings started now including using some of these pods. So when we work, when we run out of dirt blocks, we will use some of the pellets that we have. Um, what we're growing, ah, April 28th. I think it's April 28th. April 28th is Arbor Day. And what I'm doing for Arbor Day thanks to Friends of Crestwood Library who made the purchase for me, we will be giving out some white pine tree seedlings. White pine, could you not? Seriously? White pine, sorry. White pine is an excellent tree for the Northeast. One, it is, while it is not 100% fireproof, it is very difficult to set that tree on fire. It is good for areas that have become vulnerable to forest fires. Uh, it's a Northeastern tree, so it's native to our area. And I am encouraging that we plant native plants. Obviously not all of the herbs that we'll be planting are native. Uh, we do have a lot of natives around um, the neighborhood. Um, and we will be speaking about that on the next Zoom. Uh, any questions so far? Any questions about your garden, your own garden? Or potted plants in your house? Uh, Jackie, with the, with the, um, the pine seedling, uh, what kind of an area do you have to plant that in? I mean, like, I would presume you don't put it like near a fence or anything. Do you know like how far away? No, and you, you, you don't. You want to have a good six by six area or larger if you can achieve that. Because I know a lot of pine trees will grow. They'll grow in a small area. They'll go up tall. But, you know, to be practical, you want a nice wide space. I will get you the exact footage. But yeah, you want at least six by six for, okay. for that. If I were giving out uh, chestnut trees, I would definitely say six by six or 10 by 10. Um, but they don't, they don't grow tremendously fast. They, they're they pretty fast, but not like shoots up uh, right away. The most important thing is that they get planted so that they become part of our environment to keep us as fireproof as possible. Um, but I will, I will give that out. Um, those, these, these seedlings, um, and I, I'll be keeping them until the 28th. I'll keep them moist in the bag before you plant them. And I will give out instructions for this before they get planted. They have to be soaked six to eight hours before you actually put them in the ground. And you have to put them so that you cover their roots exactly. Um, to go any lower is not good. I have a diagram that goes with this. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Um, we do have a lot of plants that are going out, marigolds for pest control, um, thyme, parsley, not rosemary, uh, basil, lots of basil, hot peppers, two types of hot peppers. Um, I know sweet peppers, eggplant, uh, cucumbers, and um, courgettes, uh, zucchinis. I just blanked out on that word, wow. Um, 
So those are some of the things that we'll be giving out by the end of the week. We'll be like very busy elves between today and tomorrow, getting those packets ready. And uh, disclaimer, asterisk, not every single seed will be ready to launch. This We're working on cilantro and the herbs that came in today, and then we'll work on the vegetables and whatever we have, that is what we will give out on the day. But please, I ask that you be patient because we will be, um, we have to pack each envelope uh, because we're not buying prepackaged plastic envelopes. We're doing the paper ones. So that takes time. And if anyone would like to volunteer their time to pack our little envelopes, just give us a call. Okay, let's go into the next slide. One more time do we have? Oh, we're early. Okay. Ah, we'll talk about May a little bit and then we'll go on to more sustainable stuff. So what I would like to prepare for May, May is graduations, Mother's Day, birthdays, uh, Memorial Day, right? Uh, and and what, what am I missing? Oh, the biggest holiday in the world, my best friend Joan's birthday, May 19th. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, She's probably laughing right now. So here's what I would like to see for May. I would like each one of you to try as best as you can. We already know Z is trying. Z goes out and says, I don't wanna print up everything. I don't wanna waste a lot of paper. Z will go out and buy things that are not heavily packaged. Um, so for your celebrations, have you thought about shredding some colorful paper to use as decorations. Uh, there's also paper streamers that you can um, curl and hang on things. Stick to things that are not plastic. Um, I know everyone loves balloons. Balloons are not really biodegradable. Yes, they fall apart, but it takes, there's a lot of plastic in balloons. There is a craft, although I did not prepare to put this on. I'm sure I can get Mary to find it today. Um, they're called paper puffs, and you can make it with um, not craft paper, but that thin kind of paper. Don't have the word for it. And you can make a big puff out of this type of craft colorful paper. It's tissue paper. Uh, and you can hang it up like you would hang up a balloon and try to purchase things for your parties that you know you can use again, okay? Dishes, trays, things like that. Um, and try to make things like finger foods where you're not having to use too many utensils. Or if you're gonna use utensils, use your silverware. I know those colorful Forks and knives and spoons that match the tablecloth are great. They're lots of fun, but they're also lots of plastic. So let's try to let's try to avoid that. The other thing that Crestwood Library is preparing for is um, a repair clinic, and I will be in the coming days. I will be putting out my email and the phone number. And I'm going to gather volunteers because sometime in July or August, I would like to have a repair clinic day on a Saturday, um, about four tables where one person can repair clothing, another can repair jewelry, another person can repair some appliances without doing too much soldering because Matt and Phil are concerned about the soldering giving off toxic fumes and I don't wanna make anyone sick. Um, also bike repair. So I would like to gather some people together so that we can volunteer together and do repairs together. Um, because you know the library is really trying to serve the needs of the greater community. And rather than throw your appliances out or your jewelry or whatever, well, you'd sell your jewelry, uh, repair it. Also, buy less. And let's try to make do-it-yourself home products. For next month, I am making a bar lotion, lotion bar, 
Um, where is it? Okay, hang on. So the last set of lotion bars I made fell apart and that's a good thing. So this is what's left of my lotion bar. It's kind of in pieces and I use it on my arms and my legs and whatever my face. It is made, these ones are made out of cocoa butter, coconut oil and beeswax. The next set will be, if I'm not dropping something, it's just not my Zoom. Um, the next bar will have mango butter because some people uh, don't do well with shea butter or cocoa butter. So it'll be mango butter, coconut oil, and beeswax. Um, and it's really good for the summer. It's good for your dry skin and it's in a bar. The other thing is homemade cleaning products. I wish I had a dollar for every time I recommended baking soda to clean all your things in your house. And I wish I had another dollar for every time I recommended vinegar. How many of you use these two items to take off burnt edges on a, um, on a pan, okay? And also salt. The two things together and scrubbing really work better than anything you could get on the market. Um, and all, oh yes, Ms. Hanley, please, a question. Real quick, you said add salt to the vinegar and baking soda compound? You can, you can but, but baking soda is all already salty, but salt gives it a nice good scrub on things. Just don't do it on wood. Ms. Hanley, you were gonna ask a question? No, I was just raising my hand. To, you said who, cool. so I was just oh, saying yes. <laughs> Great, <laughs> awesome, I'm glad you do. Um, mm. well, yeah, we do, how many of you, and you don't have to raise your hands, but have you ever soaked uh, lemon, um, lemon rinds in vinegar? You do that for two weeks and you have a very good cleaner that takes off every bit of grease. I've been saying this for two years. I'm surprised you're not all yawning and going, yeah, yeah, we know. But that's a great mixture to, uh, to use for a home product. Um, okay, so the other thing, other than the cleaning products, okay, is we are doing another sneaker drive. So as you walk into Crestwood, on the left-hand side in the vestibule, the little entranceway, there's a box. And if you look at the, on my, uh, on, on my slide, we're doing athletic sneaker collection drive from April 15th through to May 15th. And it gives you, an, uh, you know, what we are looking for, new, gently used and used athletic sneakers have a thick sole, not converse, no low tops. Um, and the sneakers have to be in pairs tied together. Um, and it, the proceeds will go to the Senior Girl Scout Troop 2546 um, because they're collecting the sneakers to support their troop. Um, and it is a great way to encourage younger people in our community to feel that they can do something to reduce waste and to recycle. And these programs are very good. Uh, we are also still running the cell phone uh, program through Yonkers Public Library. We have a box and we're collecting cell phones. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of companies out there that will run these programs for free. We've already done one. Uh, we did another one um, uh, four days. We're just about finished with it, with used, gently used clothing. It's inside the library and we collected, they send, the company sends a bag, you fill it and you send it back and you get points and you can use the points to purchase other things or purchase another bag. Because a lot of these companies are taking clothing that is, you know, maybe tattered or ripped and they're turning it into something else. Um, how many of you heard what they're doing with uh, old billboard posters, like on, um, on the big signs in the city? They're turning them into bags. 
shopping bags because they're all pure plastic. Um, so we're going to be talking about that next month as well. Does anybody have anything they want to share before I move on? Okay, does anybody have any questions about uh, planting days, days that we're going to, days that we're going to start planting? If you need dirt, we do have a little extra dirt. Oh, I forgot to talk about the potatoes. Hang on. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> All right, maybe it's not the best thing ever. So um, I need scissors. Okay, so in this bag, is it? I, I know I need scissors. Oh my goodness, I'm home. Um, oh, someone put in. Thank you, Abigail Joan. The National Arbor Day Foundation is a great resource for finding plants, trees for your zone. Uh, it'll be good um, getting inf information on the seedlings for me and ah that's good if any of you know a knife sharpener we can add a knife sharpener to our repair clinic when we do it in July or August um also Joan has given us another little helpful hint if you're not sure whether you're going to purchase something, keep your items on Amazon in your shopping cart for five days. And if you haven't bought it in five days, chances are you don't need it. So that's a very good piece of advice in terms of buying less. Um, so these are just some tips. That's why we get together, it's because not everybody has the skinny on everything. And I'm one of those people I don't have skinny on, not too much. Anyway, let's talk about potatoes. So um, these are potato bags. This is what they look like. I don't want to unfurl them yet because I don't have the dirt to fill it. it. Takes a lot of dirt to fill the bags. And what we fill them with is potato seeds. And thanks to, um, thanks to Friends of Crestwood Library, we got Cuba gold potatoes. And that's what we're gonna grow in our potato bags. Those, each potato bag will be on one end of the raised bed. So we have two bags, a bag of potato seeds, and I probably will get another bag of potato seeds. Um, and we're just gonna grow them. And what's great about the bag, I don't know if you see it from the picture, is that you unfurl the bottom and you can, pick out your potatoes from the bottom. So I like the way that's configured. So you don't have to go rooting around in a bed. You just open the flap and take it from underneath. It's the same idea behind our compost bins. Yes, Joan. Can I put that like on a porch? Yes, as long as you get sun. Oh, I got you, okay. Yeah, yeah. Potatoes, I think the direction's pretty good. I know they need sun. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, <laughs> directions for microwaving the potatoes. No, don't microwave them until you've, you've uh, blown them. <laughs> okay? Let's do that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I believe they need, they need full sun, but I think it's only six hours, four to six hours of full sun. I will contact. And I'll contact the uh, company uh, because the one thing we want is we want to know how to grow these things so that we grow them in abundance without chemicals. That is why we start the seedlings in peat moss and perlite because for seed to push out its shoot, it can't have... Um, too many nutrients. It needs some nutrients, but not a lot. And then when it is when it is hardened, it's called gotten bigger and the stem is thicker, then you can put it in very rich dirt. But to start a seedling out, one of the things I've been warned about is not to put it in like, you know what you call black gold? 
I, I, you wouldn't do that, not with a seedling. You do that when it becomes, not with a seed, you do it with when the plant is a little bit older. Now, from what I can tell with our local weather, I think the cold days are behind us. I know that we're gonna have 40 degree weather in the evening coming up. So we have another week or two before we, we can plant anything. But right now we don't, we just got our seeds. So our planting will probably be in May. Um, we may have a few things that we can sow directly outside. I think the potatoes are the one thing we're gonna be putting together for Earth Day. But we will, during the summer, have days designated at the Crestwood Library, at Crestwood Library to deal with the plants, water, prune, um, and just in general, tie things up, you know, because I don't know if you have experience with growing cucumbers, but when you make that netting, right, with the ropes, you know, with the string going across, and now my Italian grandfather was like, yeah, hey, we got to stay in the van, we basically made a string tent, and the cucumbers went up across it. Um, those things, all of that takes time. So it's best that we set these up now and we could use everyone's help. And, you know, what we grow at the Crestwood Library, we share. Um, Z's looking forward to making uh, potato chips. So we're going to be making potato chips. Should be fun. Uh, you know, I think at some point, oh, I what I would also like to do is make mozzarella with everybody because that's something you can do yourself. Is it labor intense? Yes, it is. It's not horrible and it's not impossible to do, but if you have the, what is it called? I wanted to say fungus. I grew my own mushrooms. I have mushrooms on the brain. Curd. Curd. Um, yeah. Bread. I'm not making, I have celiac disease, so I can't touch flour, but I encourage people to make their own bread. Um, any questions? Uh, yes, Jackie, Ed. Yeah, Jackie um, you, you said there was gonna be a cleanup day. What day is that? April 22nd on Earth Day. Oh, so you're doing the raised beds the same day as the, the cleanup. Well, we'll be doing the raised bed sort of on a continuing basis. Uh, it's going to be more like a pop-up, but we will do some of, I'd like to be able to get some more dirt and compost in the raised bed uh, mm -hmm. and potentially uh, plant some seeds on that day, showing everyone how to do, how to do the Minecraft dirt block. If Say's in the building, she'll think this is great. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, I would like, because I would like to show people how to plant their seeds and, cause you can grow basil in your house by a window. That's all it takes. A, a pot of basil, a pot of parsley, that's $3.99, you don't have to spend. And I know people love basil, but you don't need to strip the entire plant down in order to have like a basil taste in, in the foods that you cook. Um, so yeah, you know, the idea is I, this isn't gonna be some, uh, oh my God, we have a bumper crop of three acres of food. It's a beginning. I want us to start someplace because with the way things are going, I think it makes sense if we start to grow our own food. Why not? Makes sense to me. So any other questions? Because we're at the end. And I want to talk about next month. I don't know if Z is present, but I believe, ah, thank you. Um, Ms. Hanley said true. Uh, Ms. Hanley agrees. So next month, uh, I believe my date is May 17th. Uh, I don't have that confirmed, but that's for the next, the new Sustainable You um to do our zoom program um it'll be this is pretty much the same time next month so one o'clock i think may 17th but i will put out i will put out the uh notice does anybody have anything else they want to share 
Yes, I do. I want to share that I'm so excited that we have so many wonderful projects um, to do with nature. Today, we're making uh, art after, out of natural materials like pine cones and pine needles and recyclable plates, etc. So that's going on today. We have the Bizak Curb project that we're doing. And all day Saturday for World Art Day, we're having on the 15th uh, Saturday, you can come in and make a piece of art, whether it's writing, whether it's a video, whether it's collage, whether it's sculpture about your relationship with nature. So I feel like this is really important and it goes well with sustainability. So I want to thank Jackie for presenting all these plethora of wonderful ideas. I want to thank everybody for being on here. I want to thank the friends for their support and the NORC for their support. And does anybody else have anything we want to say? Jackie, I think the next one is May 10th. That's what I have. May 10th. Okay, awesome. Right, Z, May 10th? Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. So we will be giving out the crocheted earth and we will be giving out the kitchen scrubby just for dishes, not for caked on pans. This really wouldn't do much on a black pan that's been like cheese burnt on a pan. That won't get the cheese out, okay? So this is good for your dishes. Um, so yeah, stop by, we'll have little giveaways and I hope to see you next month, May 10th.